Hey, Bayek, it's me, and, and in today's video, I'm continuing my series of looking at classic Doctor Who from 1970, the colour era. That's it, yes, this is, as usual, another fantastic, brilliant story, but it's also important because it is the first story featuring the fourth doctor it's a very important story it's um the beginning of a new era but um in this story the baton is being passed on um so barry letts and terence dix oh, he wrote this he did the screenplay for this to terence dix they are handing it over to um Philip Hinchcliffe and Robert Holmes and what a team and what a season this is going to be as a debut season um so we see it's a um after the regeneration of the doctor we see the new doctor and how of course he famously um as a sort of uh, rough well, not a rough period, but a rather strange transformation uh, period as he's settling down into his new body. And it's, it's always wonderful to see. It's like a tradition in many ways now with Doctor Who. Um, and this is great. So this is um, season 12, four episodes, uh, 28th of December, uh, 74, to... 18th of January 1975 and the reaction was amazing on the first episode it got 10.8 million views there was a lot of excitement and anticipation but of course I think some of the reaction as usual is that there's a, a worry about what the new doctor is going to be um, but uh, it's interesting to see what the response is um, now, it's directed by Christopher Barry. Um, he was a real well-established Doctor Who director. He goes right back to directing the Daleks in um, 63, 64 period, um, which is amazing. Um, it, um, just, uh, just loads of episodes. That I'll just pick out The Power of the Daleks, 1966 of course was the debut of the second doctor um which is um well fantastic <laughs> it's an absolutely fantastic episode um a, a notable uh pertwee episode is the demons 1971 that is an amazing episode and then we got the brain of morbius um 1976 and there are others as well i've not mentioned they're just key ones I've picked out. Um, so um, th the important thing about this was the casting of Tom Baker and what a brilliant choice of casting it was. Um, there were quite a few worries and problems trying to find the right character. And believe it or not, it all sealed um, on um, them going to the cinema to see the golden voyage of Sinbad and that they immediately said this is the man this is the who we're going to cast this was in 1973 film Tom Baker was actually still uh, as an actor working on a building site and he immediately well obviously he loved the idea of this role it would be an established work and he soon found out that he could have a lot of uh, input in many ways to the actual character. As he said, he, the Doctor was him. <laughs> I think that's true. I think that's so true as well. Uh, his character, the way he was able to do it, it's just, uh, it's him. It, it, it just 
it's it's great. He immediately won people over, as we've seen. Um, just the, his very presence is just fantastic. So we've got Tom Baker then cast as a doctor. Then we've got Elizabeth Slade and Sarah Jane. Um, absolutely amazing. I, I, you can't help but love Sarah Jane. Um, and immediately that relationship is built with the, the fourth Doctor. But also there's another important part of the story involving um, Sarah Jane as well, which is interesting to look at. Um, the other is we've got another new companion, which is Ian Martyr, who we'd seen in Cannibal of the Monsters, now playing the new uh, character, Harry Sullivan. Yeah, so that's... That's great. And he's really good, as we know. I've talked about him before. Excellent character. Um, then we've got, in this episode, we've got um, Unit back uh, there, I suppose. Because don't forget, now Unit, as we're going to see, is not involved as much in the stories. We're moving, going to move away from Unit, to some extent, the Earthbound episodes. Um, and... We've got, as usual, Nicholas Courtney playing the Brigadier. We've got John Levine playing Benton. And then just um, uh, key characters like um, Professor Kettlewell, who's important in the thing. He's played by Edward Burnham. And he does a great eccentric job as the Professor. Wonderful. Then we've got, I think it was rather good, is... Um, Patricia Maynard plays Miss Winter. She's a great villain. She's a great, wonderful villain, and she plays this really well. And then the robot. Yeah, the robot's really good, um, and it must have been difficult for the actor in this. And I know there are some people who might look at the robot in some issues with the filming and think, well, you know, but this is Doctor Who. But the robot, I think, looks remarkably good. I like it. It, it. It's good. And now, this is played by a sort of more um, voice kind of actor who did a lot of radio work. But the important thing was, he was very tall. And um, his name was um, Michael Kigariff. That's it. I think that's right. But he, he's really good. That voice is um, fantastic. Fantastic. Now, um, it was the first story to be filmed on location with videotape. Now, that is important because um, it's a, another important change as technology is developing and um, Doctor Who is following on. So, in terms of filming, that is important. Um, also, what people regard as the special effects is interesting because by doing this, they were able to rectify the mistakes that had been clearly made in the invasion of the dinosaurs with the um, effects. And they were able to utilize now the videotape effects, which made the robot um, hopefully look, um, you know, I think quite convincing. Um, because there had been problems with the dinosaurs' invasion of the Earth. So, uh, um, you know, the inv not invasion of Earth, the invasion episode, a uh, dinosaur invasion of Earth. Um, also, it, it was filmed um, at Wood Norton in Worcestershire, which was a BBC engineering department, and they had the sort of filming around that area and the particular... Um, big sort of um, buildings and stuff around there that they're involved in. And it all looks very good and very effective as well, the location work. Um, it's um, a story that I think um, it still stands up well. It still stands up. The basic premise, I better give you the premise of the story, is that it involves a group of um, I suppose you could call them fringe renegade scientists who are led by Miss Winters. 
um and she she almost is written like as a very uh, there's that feminist influence as well but she's playing very much a fascist character that's a fascist sort of organization and um they are going to use this experimental robot which had been developed by professor kettlewell uh, to steal the nuclear codes and blackmail the world's governments that is the premise of the story and they're using the robot but the story is it's about really um the robot's relationship in many ways with sarah jane and that is influenced by King Kong, the film, the original King Kong film. Um, and I think that's really good. It, it, it's, it's trying to show the dilemma about uh, robots and being human and um, the Asimov thing about the rules of what a robot should um, do, you know, that it's not allowed, there's certain rules and it should be built in that it's not allowed to break those rules. Um, uh, it's a it's a science fiction con, um, you know, particularly important. We see it in the Robots of Death as well. That about the rules about robots, but this is a science fiction con. Um, Asimov um, certainly developed this. Um, we've also, I think, when you look at the story, it's. It's just, it's following that great tradition that when the Doctor um, is regenerating, he at first is rather disorientated and um, we get him behaving rather eccentrically and strange and Tom Baker just <laughs> brilliant at it. You know, I love the bits where he's coming in and out with the uh, different... Um, uh, costumes that he's going to wear and it's just so eccentric and funny and then of course he settles into the um costume that we all love and um it's it just you just see it straight away this is just right and um you soon get a feel of the doctor i think because he's playing himself in many ways as he said you soon get into his role the that eccentricity, how different his performance is from John Pertwee as a character already, you can see it. He's not the dandy figure anymore. He's this rather eccentric figure, but who's, who's really, you get, you, he's very lovable as well. You know, he's, um, it, it, it's already there. And the viewers, obviously some viewers, I'd love Tom, uh, sorry, I'd love John Pertwee so much in his performance that they were a bit sceptical, as they would. But I would say by the time we get to the arc in space, people were already being won over, you know. There's always people don't like change, as we know, and they never like that. But I think Tom Baker was, um, in the history of the programme, was actually somebody who was able to quickly get the fans on the side um thinking yeah we like this performance yeah um yeah and um he of course the rest is history because he is just such a a wonderful actor um or is he an actor people say in his performance that it's him it's just great you know and this is, as I say, the golden era of Doctor Who, and he really does it. Um, fantastic. Um, this is just another enjoyable um, opening regeneration story, and um, I can't really fault it at all. I, I, I know people may look at the CGI stuff, as they call it. It wasn't CGI then, because <laughs> with CGI is a thing, but it actually looks so good. I think what they do on the budget, you think of the budget and the effects that they have to do, and I like the robot. I think the robot looks great. But as I say, deeper down in the story, it's it's wonderful to see that relationship with Robot and Sarah Jane. And um, I, I just totally enjoy it you know and um, it's an, an um, sort of a story that i've come back to 
over the years um because you can't help but just enjoy it you know it just you just get into it really quickly you know it, it's it's great um i can't highly recommend it enough um what else can i say um well well i'll tell you what we'll do we'll talk about um its release um it was released on vhs in 1992 2007 it got this dvd release and then of course it um got the um uh, doctor who collection release in 2020 on blu-ray i'll just show you this one this is the dvd and the documentary is absolutely fantastic great interviews with tom baker and sarah jane the writers um Barry Letts as well, um, Phil Inchcliffe. Um, it's just great. Oh, Terence Dix as well. I don't, I forget him. Sadly, Robert Holmes isn't with us anymore. But um, mind you, no, he's sadly Ter Terence Dix isn't now. So um, it's good to see him there. But sadly, he's not there. And Sarah Jane as well. It, it is quite, and Tom Baker is actually now giving in this sort of period of time whereas before he wouldn't really he's talking about the program a lot um his role as the doctor which is really good to see but always with a glint in his eye and a, and a sense of humor <laughs> definitely so this is a good release um i said the documentary is worth it which of course is on uh as i'll show you um it's on the um blu-ray as well as with other updated um material uh we've got as usual the disc and we've got these these give you information about the episode and everything um which is fantastic um well worth getting you know obviously it's just it's a great thing to have in your collection but here it is, of course, it's in this again. I keep showing this one. I've been showing it a lot. It's season 12 box set. Fantastic extras and everything in this. And this story is in there, of course. Being the uh, opening story. Um, great season. There it is. There's all the details There's about the extra effects as well as what's on the DVD. Um, yeah, I highly recommended um so that's it uh that's my review of robot and um i hope it gives you an insight if you've never seen it go and check it out you'll love it honestly you'll love it if you love classic doctor who you can't help but love it and all you new doctor who or newer doctor who fans i'm sure you'll really appreciate it i, I really think you will so um all I'm going to say as usual is that um, subscribe if you're uh, interested in these videos I produce. Um, if you like it, please give it a like. Um, it costs note and it all helps with algorithms. And some more people hopefully might be able to see my videos. I hope and maybe enjoy them or perhaps I won't. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows what goes on? Um, and if you've got any comments, please comment. I always love to hear what you have to say. Um, that's it. So all I've got to say is, I'll see thee, I'll see thee again.